On your Thursday episode of Locked On Raptors, we continue game show week, gimmick week, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be a ton of fun as we are playing a game that I've devised called Mid-Level Madness. Look, there are a lot of guys out there who the Raptors might go and sign with their mid-level exception this summer. And the best way to talk about them, I think, is in rapid-fire game show form with our pal Louis Zatzman from Raptors Republic. I have a hat full of names. We're just going to pick names out. We get 90 seconds to riff on them. That's all coming up on today's episode of Locked On Raptors. It's Mid-Level Madness, Big Man Edition. Thanks for being here. You are Locked On Raptors, your daily Toronto Raptors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to episode number 1184 of Locked On Raptors for Thursday, May the 26th. I'm your host, Sean Woodley of RaptorsHQ.com. You can find me on Twitter, as always, at Woodley Sean. You can find the show at Locked On Raptors, and you can follow, subscribe to, rate, review the podcast on all your favorite podcast apps for the low, low price of On the House. You can also go to YouTube and join the the north of 2,000 satisfied customers who have subscribed to the YouTube channel. Please go and let's push it towards 3K, shall we? It's much appreciated when you take the time to support the to support the show and it's always appreciated when you make us your first listen of the day as i'm sure you are doing all right on today's show you can sense it i'm bursting with energy right now because i'm very excited for the concept i've devised for today's show we're playing a game called mid-level madness i have a hat right here it's a bedazzled uh his and hers mustache hat that my got my friends got me when i got engaged a couple of years ago uh and i have in this hat a bunch of big men who are on the free agent market we're just gonna pick names and we're gonna talk about them for about three minutes a pop as to whether or not they would be a good or bad target for the raptors to pursue in free agency with their mid-level exception or a chunk of the mid-level exception and joining me for this very chaotic venture is our pal lewis zatzman from raptors republic who has graciously offered to put up with this for the next uh well we're gonna do two episodes today so next hour or so uh lewis how are you man howdy i'm wonderful uh can't wait to be here super excited by your energy and i'm glad you showed me the hat because i was absolutely gonna call shenanigans without a visual <laughs> i was i was gonna accuse you of of frozen names in the hat uh, i mean i still might accuse you of that <laughs> but uh it's a it's a beautiful hat uh, I'm excited by the his or her bedazzled mustaches. Thank you very much. Uh, there's not a mustache on the hers hat. I can't remember what's on the hers hat, actually. I have to dig that out of my fiance's closet. That probably uh, means it's uh, not <laughs> G-rated for the show. <laughs> I also have a, uh, a different hat for tomorrow's show, which we're recording in half an hour. Uh, so I'll reveal that tomorrow. There's a tease. Be sure you tune in for the Mid-Level Madness Wings and Guards edition. But today, we're going big men, Lewis. And I got to say, I did not think I was going to come up with as many big men as potential targets for the Raptors as uh, I expected. I, I, I really thought this was going to be a short list of dudes. But hey, I have like at least a dozen names in here that we're going to pull from, which is very very exciting. You submitted some names to me. I threw some of my own in as well. Uh, and I just threw a couple in for sort of interest sake because they're big, sexy names. And that's what we're in the name of the game here for. Um, so before we dive into mid-level madness, which I'll explain how it's going to work in a second. I just want to get your thoughts, Lewis. There's, I think, a bit of a sort of rift when it comes to Raptors fans and like what the mid-level exception should be used for this season. A refresher, the mid-level is about 10 million bucks this year, 10.3, I believe, to be exact. Yeah. And that can be split up amongst, amongst multiple players or it can be given all in one big fat sum to one player. Uh, and we're not talking like crazy superstar additions here. All of the players that we're going to talk about are flawed. Uh, previous mid-level signings for the Raptors include Kem Birch and uh, Aaron Baines as well. So that's kind of the... The world we're operating within, stronger free agent class maybe than usual, we'll get into that. But overall, your philosophy, Lewis, on should the Raptors be using their mid-level on a big, a wing, a guard, someone who does all of the things, another 6'8 dude who can't shoot, what is your view on what the Raptors should be doing with that mid-level exception? Here's the teaser for the big episode. <laughs> I don't think the Raptors need a big. <laughs> <laughs> the right big, sure. You know, some somebody like Bryant, who, who you already mentioned... Mm -hmm. um, I think there are some bigs who would fit the team, but the idea of just getting a big to get him 
I think mm-hmm. is unnecessary for the team for uh, this offseason, which mm-hmm. will come out as we get into the hat, I'm sure. Yeah, I will say I'm with you as well. I think there is certainly an argument for you know trying to beef up the front court when it comes to specific matchups. I just don't know if the Raptors are in the place right now where they need to throw their best resource this offseason at that problem when it's probably something you can address midseason, you can do trades, you know, if you realize, oh man, we're going to be sort of in position to be a lot higher in the conference than we thought, staring down a matchup with Philly again or something like that, you can go and make a deadline move if you have to, to address yeah. that spot the way they did with the little guy we call Mark Gasol in these parts. Uh, my daddy, Mark Gasol, of course. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Mark Gasol is not in the hat, by the way, as much as I wish he were. It'd be really fun to bring that dude back, but there are a ton of names in here. So how this is going to work we'll get one in before the break and then we'll have time for a few on the other side as well uh i'm going to pull a name out of the hat i will show the name to the camera uh lewis as the guest you will get the right to either argue for or against the raptors signing that player you have 90 seconds to do so before my very annoying buzzer goes off then I will have a buzzer. I have a buzzer. It's just on my phone. I was looking for a video to run to really kind of make some stress, but uh, you'll hear it come through the mic, I'm sure. It's low production value, but what else would you expect here with me as the host? Uh, so we're going to dig in. I'm going to pull out a name. You're going to argue for or against. I will then rebut you and give you a reason why the Raptors should go and sign him, whether I believe it or not, because, baby, that's just the, the take industry that we work in, baby. Uh, mm-hmm. But, yeah. Let's begin, shall we? Are you ready to play mid-level madness, big man edition? Let's do it. Thumbs up. Excellent. Here we go. I'm using, I'm not looking. There's no frozen uh, pieces of paper in here. Let's go. Who have I pulled out? I have pulled out a legend. Can you see it? You can't. The light's too strong. I'll just say who the name is. It's Bismack Biombo. Biz... Daddy had himself a year with the uh, Phoenix Suns, of course, was playing playoff games. Uh, Bismack Biombo, you get 30 seconds or a minute, 30 seconds to argue for or against a reunion with Biz. Which would you like to argue? I will take against. Okay, you have 90 seconds on the clock starting now. I know that your rebuttal will win by virtue of emotions. (laughs) But this is basically a good example of what I was saying. The Raptors have bigs. Mm -hmm. They have Chris Boucher, who can play center in a pinch when they need him. They have Kem Birch, who is basically giving you everything that Bizback Biombo does now when he's hurt with a knee injury. Mm -hmm. And they have Precious Achua, who does everything and way more. They have bigs, which Mm -hmm. is why I don't think they need to sign another undersized defense-first big. The offense is what needs the most work on the team not something you traditionally address from the big spot, which is why I'm going to be going against on most guys. As much as I love Bismack, he does not help the offense. He hurts it, and I think it would be a waste of the resources available. Wow, you didn't even need the full time for the buzzer. This is unbelievable. I have to reset my thing now uh, to a minute 30 seconds. To You're just efficient, man. We'll get the buzzer going off here. At some Unlike time. Bismack Biombo. <laughs> I mean, on your very website, he was the subject of a literal counter of all the bunnies he missed when he played for the Toronto Raptors. All right, I'll, my 90 seconds will begin now. Let's go. Look. Yes, Bismack Biombo is not an awesome offensive player. Yes, he usually is only really successful when he's tied to a genius, otherworldly, generational point guard like Kyle Lowry or Chris Paul. Do I think he could establish the similar sort of connection in a bench unit with, say, Malachi Flynn? Probably not. But... The Toronto Raptors have always been a team about vibes. They've been about family. They've been about enjoying watching the basketball team playing basketball in front of you. And while a guy like Ken Birch is quite nice and, you know, he's got the passport working for him and all that stuff, I could totally see a world in which you swap out Ken Birch. You know, maybe you trade him to a team that's in need of a backup center, some veteran sort of leadership. I have the Thunder earmarked as a potential Ken Birch landing spot. If they get Chet Holmgren, who better to sort of serve as his backup than Ken Birch in that front court? A guy who was as, as thick as two of Ale- Alexei Pokashevsky and Chet Holmgren put together. Uh, this seems like a pretty good landing spot. And if you can give a small portion of your mid-level exception to Bismack Biombo. I think that's a worthwhile trade-off in order to get the vibes for a 12th man who will be the vibiest 12th man that ever 12th man, 12th manned? That's that's the word I'm trying to say. 
So yeah, it's not an on-court fit. The Raptors don't necessarily need, uh, you know, a non-shooting, offensively challenged center. But why not? Because it would be really, really fun. And there goes the buzzer. Is that coming through the mic? Is that coming through? That's coming all? through the mic. Excellent. I'm so happy. I heard, We're going to stop it there. <laughs> We're going to stop it there then, and we will move on in just a second here. Bismack Biombo, we love you. You're done. We're moving on. We're going to bring so, in... Oh, question yeah, for what you. What you got? Yeah. Not on this occasion, but just future looking. What's the what's the stance on rebuttals? What do you mean the stance on rebuttals? Say you say something that I'm, I'm so aggrieved by yeah. that I have to jump in with a comment. You have... I, 15 seconds to snipe okay. at me quickly. Yeah. What do you got? Do you have anything oh, no, in response no. to the Beyond? I have nothing for this. Okay. Just I was want right. To keep we my love options it. open. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. We're going to move forward in just a second here. We're going to pull out probably three more names from the hat in the next segment. But before we do that, I want to tell you about our friends over at rockauto.com. When you go to rockauto.com, you are taking back the power that you lose when you go to the mechanic and you need something fixed on your car. It's a stressful experience. It costs a lot of money. It's your way from point A to point B. Sometimes your livelihood depends on your car and you shouldn't be spending top dollar to fix it when there are options right there for you with rockauto.com to not spend top dollar. For example, if you go to a regular auto shop chain store and you need to get, say, your Honda Odyssey fuel pump replaced. Am I making that up the thin air? No, it's right in the copy here. An average Honda Odyssey fuel pump is going to run you about 353 bucks from a chain store. At Rock Auto, you can get it for $216. And there are other options as well, maybe more expensive, but a brand you like or whatever it might be. It's all there at Rock Auto. It's going to save you money that you shouldn't be spending on your car. They are a family business. They've been doing it for over 20 years and their prices are reliably low for every customer. I encourage you to go check them out. they got everything you might need from the important stuff to the aesthetic stuff and everything in between. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck and write locked on. How did you hear, did you hear about us, Box? So they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the car parts you will ever need at rockauto.com. All right, we continue on with Mid-Level Madness Big Man Edition here on your first listen of the day with Louis Zatzman, managing editor of Raptors Republic. He's the grand poobah over there. All right, Louis, are you ready for Big Man number two to come out of the mustache hat? Hit me, baby. One more time. All right, let's go. I'm going to hit you like four more times at least, so get ready, Brittany. Uh, Here we go. The next player I have pulled out is a guy who's still playing right now in the NBA playoffs, Dwayne Deadman. Dwayne Deadman. I will give you first right of refusal on this one. Do you want to argue for or against Dwayne Deadman, Toronto Raptors mid level signing? Yeah, I'll argue for him, actually. Hell yeah, let's go. Uh, I think Deadman is actually a better defender than people give him credit for. Um, he's had I a. I started the timer, bo- by the way. I forgot to almost do Perfect. the ceremonial timer starting. It has begun now. Uh, he's had a, a similar Bobby Portis type uh, shift where I think he was seen as this undersized guy, but as the league has sort of um, shifted its post-ups from the bigs to the wings, uh, he has become a sort of traditionally sized center right now in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, he's not a knockdown shooter, but he'll you know probably take more threes than any non-Achua center on the roster. Uh, so if we're talking... 15 minutes a game, which is probably what you're going to ask. Uh, I, I would love Deadman on the team. I think he helps both ends. Uh, and I think what is the the presupposition here is that Chua becomes a starter. And yeah. I think this is something we'll discuss for most names, but I don't think the Raptors are going to get a starting big on, free, on the free agency market. So if we're looking for a backup big, I'm in. Deadman, give it to me. Man, you're just getting you. I should shorten the timer here. I don't want to get cut off. To put I you just under don't want duress. That. <laughs> you don't want that stress of being cut off yeah. midpoint with something lingering there. I understand. That's fine. I'm going to now start my rebuttal back. Here we go. Uh, Dwayne Dedman's old, man. The Raptors mm. are likely going to be trying to keep Thad Young in town, of course. Uh, you know, he's going to take up some you know mileage in the front court as well. And look, Dwayne Dedman 
while he has had moments where he's been a pretty good shooter in the past, he had a 38% season with Atlanta in 2018-19. He was 36% the season before that in Atlanta. Pretty low volume, but actually, you know, 2.3 attempts in 17-18, 3.4 attempts in 18-19. But then across his games with Sacramento and Atlanta in 2019-20, he shot a grand total of 20% on 2.4 attempts. He was 20% last season in Miami, and his 40% clip this year comes on just 0.7 attempts per game I kind of think you're getting a fake shooter if you bring in Dwayne Dedman I definitely understand the defensive side of things and you know you kind of note that he was sort of deemed as this small guy uh he's listed at seven feet tall which would be an anomaly on the Toronto Raptors and frankly I think it's better for my brain if everyone is under six uh, under 610 just uh, it keeps my uh, sort of vision for the team on point and Dwayne Dedman kind of muddles that a little bit I see the arguments for it but I don't buy him as an actual real shooter and at his age I would much rather sort of younger and more spry addition to be the backup center as opposed to someone as as advanced in his career as Dwayne Dedman is as good as he might be that's a minute and 27 seconds baby uh do you have a 15 second rebuttal back to me no i i I agree he's not the shooter everyone thinks he is and he's what 32 33 Mm -hmm. Uh, so something we're going to be discussing as we go on right should this be on on court fit do you just want a player or do you want a development piece Mm -hmm. it's a good point uh all right Dwayne Devin, you're out let's go continue on with the next player in the mustache hat before we get to the next break, it is, oh, this is a good one. Also still playing and playing a pretty meaningful role Meaningful role in today's uh, conference finals. Is it today? I think so. Conference finals are running together. Kavon Looney. Kavon Looney, a potential free agent from the Golden State Warriors. Had himself a big game pretty recently. Might be playing himself into some money, but I kind of think not because he's Kavon Looney. Uh, Louis Satsman. Take it away. Do you want to argue for or against future Toronto Raptor, Kevon Looney? Yeah, I'll argue for. Uh, All right. I, I do think it's extremely unrealistic. I mm-hmm. I have almost no hopes that he would fit under the $10 million salary. But let's just pretend he does. Sure, give me some Kevon Looney. The guy's six foot nine. He looks like he's seven foot seven. Uh, <laughs> he is absolutely gigantic. You can't bully him. He is enormously strong. Uh Sounds like a center we already have in Kem Birch, but what he adds that Kem Birch is good at and Looney is great at is both finishing around the rim, right? He'll mm-hmm. get it. He'll just go up and finish. And passing. He has always been one of the best passing bigs in the NBA. Um, you don't need to be a good shooter if you're a great passer at the big position because you can keep the advantage moving. You can keep it going. And so I think he would help the offense uh, probably as a low-minute starter. I think he would slot in really well. Defensively, he would probably be the best uh, drop big. He would be the best traditional bigs. You know, Achua's the best defensive big in the history of the NBA. But he's a switcher. <laughs> you know, he steps out on guards and wings. You you need to have both, right? You need to have an innings eater big. Uh, and that would be where Looney fits in as the starter. Uh, love the idea. Have zero per hope that it would ever happen. But give me that Looney, baby. All right, again, in under your 90 seconds. Very well done. I was close that time, right? Yeah, it was about a minute 20 seconds, so good job. Okay. Uh, okay. Really good understanding of clock awareness. It was fantastic. Uh, the, the anti-Gary Trent Jr. All right, we're going to <laughs> continue on with my rebuttal here, starting now. Uh, I think for me, the thing that threw me off was your suggestion that he would be a low-minute starter for the Toronto Raptors. For me, my entire vision for next year's team is built under the assumption that Precious Achua is going to be a 30-minute a game game starting center for the Toronto Raptors given all the runway to make mistakes to you know try things out to fail and then learn from said failures and I think if you bring in a guy like Looney who's accustomed to starting he started 80 games for a team that might win the freaking title that could create a bit of a a problem there right like I don't think you're getting Looney in in town with 10 million bucks unless he's got a promise of being a starter in which case I really don't like the fit because 
I want Precious playing as much as possible. Yes, it's low minutes, sure, but I think it's always easier to get guys heavy minutes that you want to get them to when they can start and you're not artificially suppressing their minutes with a six-minute bench spurt at the beginning of a game. And as much as Looney does a lot of really good things the Raptors are looking for in terms of rim protection, he would probably fit the Raptors' defense very, very nicely in terms of ability to cover ground, to be that back line of of defense and, and sort of rotate over. I just don't know if his offensive skills and repertoire fit quite enough to make him a starter. Pascal and Scotty Barnes are great passers. Fred Van Vliet's a great passer. Yes, it's nice to have all good passers, but I kind of feel like his passing impact would be limited because everyone else around him is a good passer. And the buzzer is going off. I am done. And Here I, uh, I yeah. have a rebuttal. Okay, go nuts. You say he wouldn't be a good offensive fit. He's one of the best offensive rebounders in the league, which is the entire point of Toronto's offense. You make a good point. Uh, come on, Looney, you're done. We're going to continue on before I follow f- fall further down this uh, th- this rabbit hole of being wrong. All right, one more before we get to the break. Here we go. It is. Here we go. Ooh, a fun one. A young guy. One of those developmental prospects. Mitchell Robinson. Lewis. Mitchell Robinson on the outs with the New York Knicks, it seems. Uh, I want to confirm his... I think he's a UFA because he was a second-round pick. Uh, and so, Mitchell Robinson, I would give you the first right of refusal. For or against Mitchell Robinson, go. It's going to be controversial. I am against bringing Mitchell, Mitchell Robinson in to the Raptors. Okay. Let me describe it this way. When you have a mansion, you can walk in and, and say, look at those beautiful French windows. You know, they're gorgeous. If you're building your own mansion and you start with the French windows, you're going to end up with a disaster of a house. <laughs> I Mitchell have no Robinson, idea where this is going, but please Mitchell Robinson on. would look great as an accoutrement on a mm-hmm. team that already has everything in place. Okay. They already have the foundation, the walls, beautiful door, French windows. The Raptors don't have that. They need to add more foundational substance to the house. Mitchell Robinson is not that. He is a developmental piece that probably wouldn't get enough time to develop. Mm -hmm. He is a developmental piece that would not complement the development already in-house. He is not a good shooter. He is extremely good at dunking lobs. The Raptors don't have any phenomenal lob throwers. Not a great cutter. He fouls really easily. Not really efficient at you know, ground cover coverage and awareness on the defensive end. He's never really grown into the world or world world eater that people think he could be. I just don't think he would get time. Don't think he would develop. Well, it would probably end up in a similar situation where he's on the Knicks right now. That's fair. Wow. Minute 24. You're really, really pushing it. You're getting close. It's fantastic. All right. I actually kind of think I earnestly disagree on this one. I think the Raptors are a team that should take a shot at a guy who's 23, who's been playing in a Knicks program that we know is not awesome at developing guys. He's got obviously hilarious talent and athleticism that pops off the page. He's a very good offensive rebounder as well. Averaged nearly as many offensive rebounds as defensive rebounds this season for the New York Knicks. And... You mentioned the Raptors have never really had like an actual earnest lob threat. Precious Achua might be that, but I don't know if it's going to be fully formed this season or next. Why not take a one or two year flyer on Mitchell Robinson, who's 23 years old, who was thrown to the fire in the NBA like immediately when he was drafted, when he was probably not ready for that and acquitted himself pretty nicely. He feels like the kind of guy who you put onto a real basketball team with a real development staff and like not a total disaster in terms of like, yes, the Knicks made the playoffs one year, but like, come on, fake season. What are we doing here? Uh, I I just feel like he's the perfect kind of guy for the Raptors to try and fix. And to me, the rim protection he offers is just undeniable. Yes, maybe he's a bit of like a Hassan Whiteside, early Chris Boucher, like gets blocks because he's out of position. But guess what? They taught Chris Boucher how to play positional sound defense and look how good he is. Imagine the beauty. You move Precious Achua to the starting five and your new chaos boys off the bench become Mitchell Robinson and Chris Boucher. To me... Good luck scoring on those two freaks. Good luck get having any sort of uh, luck get, getting a rebound with those guys around. I'm fully on board with the Mitchell Robinson experience. I also forgot to press the timer, so I think I'm over 90 seconds. Do you have a rebuttal? <laughs> no, I, I think uh, this is, again, I, I, our philosophy is where we disagree, not on the player. Sure. 
Sure. You want development, and I just want a, a vet who will contribute. Is what it looks like. That's fair. Uh, That's fair. Which is, uh, I have no way to convince you, no way to say you're right, I'm wrong either. It just is our differences. Disagreement. We love it. It's the mother of good TV. All right. We are going to continue on and dive into a couple more names out of the mustache hat in just one second here. But first, I do want to tell you about our friends over at Truebill. Did you know that uh, Truebill is here to save you from all those subscriptions you've signed up for but have forgotten to cancel and are now getting charged for? I do this all the time because I'm kind of a dummy. I'll sign up for a free trial of something because I want to get that three, you know, the one, two, three, or or four uses out of it over the course of a month, and then I totally forget to cancel it, and then all of a sudden I'm paying an annual fee for something or a monthly fee for something, and I just keep on forgetting to cancel it because... Span. I'm darting all over the place. We're seeing it right here. Uh, I think we you got to go to Truebill to get, get all of your subscriptions canceled for you. You can save up to $720 a year with Truebill because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel. Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions for you. And they have a Truebill concierge for you whenever you need them to cancel an unwanted subscription so you don't have to. They have over 2 million users. It's helped them save over $100 million. That is incredible. Uh, go check them out. Don't fall for subscription scams anymore. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. Go right now to Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. It could save you thousands a year. All right, we are here. We got two more names to pull from the hat here in Mid-Level Madness, Big Man Edition with Louis Zatzman from Raptors Republic. Let's begin, shall we, with the next name, which is... Ooh, this is a fun one. Isaiah Hartenstein. No one can read this. The light's too strong. Isaiah Hartenstein from the Los Angeles Clippers, one of the big risers in uh, NBA nerd Twitter over the year, I would say. Uh, Lewis, for or against Isaiah Hartenstein, you have 90 seconds on the clock. I'm extremely for another guy I think is uh, uh, extremely unlikely, let's say. I think he played himself into a bigger contract. He was unbelievable with the Clippers, not just a riser amongst nerds, a riser amongst anyone who watches the Clippers. He was so good. Uh, the reason why I think he'd fit the Raptors is uh, 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 all sorts of reasons. He is <laughs> extremely good on offense. Uh, he takes that 0.5 idea to the absolute max. 0. 0.5 is, you know, when you get the ball, you 0.5 seconds, you either shoot, pass, or drive immediately. Make, you know, you have no time to think. And he does that so well, especially as a big. He commands no touches. He doesn't post up. He just slings the ball all over the place, keeps it moving, extends advantages. Defensively, he was one of the best rim protectors in the league this year. He just erased everything that came remotely close. Whereas for Mitchell Robinson, that is theoretical. For Hartenstein, that is 100% actual. He just denies everything at the rim. A little bit of switchability. You know, he's he's not a giant at the center spot, so he's able to step out on guys. All in on, on Isaiah. Don't think it'll happen, though. Uh, it's really difficult for me to argue against your points. Uh, <laughs> I know it's the point of the podcast, but he'd be a wonderful fit. Eight, five and two in 18 minutes a game off the bench, a block a game, like shot 64% on twos. He feels like a wonderful, wonderful fit, whether it's as a starter or as a sort of medium minutes backup center to pressures Achua, kind of giving a very different look. I'm at a loss. (laughs) I don't know how to argue against it. I guess the thing to argue against is, you know, is it a one year sort of thing that we saw? Is it a flash in the pan? Was it because of circumstance? Because he got to play a whole lot for a team that didn't have a lot of uh, actual sort of ambition because all of its best players were injured all season long. Can he be part of a winning basketball team in terms of his defense and his mobility and things like that? I guess that is sort of the unknown here. And if I'm the Clippers, I'm probably a little bit worried about, you know, committing a ton of money to him just because of you know, that very fact, he's had one season of looking like a real NBA player and it's hard to, you know, paint forward what, what it's all going to look like. But yeah, if the Raptors could throw a couple years and 10 million a year at him, all for it. That sounds like a ton of fun. Uh, it's the kind of free agent that I think is sort of, there's upside potential there where you sign a lot of guys to mid-level deals and, you know, there's not a ton of upside. It's like only downside, whereas Hartenstein might actually have, uh, you know, some untapped potential there. So, yeah, hard for me to argue against it. Other than that, maybe it's just a one-year thing that we need some more proof of concept for. But 
I don't feel very confident in saying that. All right, we're going to pick out uh, one last name here from the mustache hat from the big man conversation. Who do we got? Thankfully, this is a guy I really wanted to talk about. I'm glad I pulled him out. It is, of course, Thomas Bryant. Again, no one can read this on the YouTube. I don't know why I'm holding it up. Hartenstein, Robinson, I got to throw your paper away ceremonially as well. You're done. And now we are on to Thomas Bryant of the Washington Wizards and selling Sunset fame. Uh, Lewis, for or against Thomas Bryant? So this is the name that I am extremely for. Uh, He is one of two guys. We'll get to the other guy in the next show. Uh, that I actually really think the Raptors should go for in free agency. I think Thomas Bryant fixes a lot of the problems that the Raptors have. He is a low-hanging fruits king. Mm -hmm. What what I mean by that is your big is supposed to dunk the basketball. Just Mm -hmm. make your layups, get some points, score easy, score efficiently. And the Raptors have not had that guy for a long time since like JV they haven't had a center who just puts the ball in the basket and precious to for all his ability all his skills and talents he's not super efficient from two-point range Thomas Bryant is the exact opposite from two-point range he has never shot below 60 percent in his career he actually led the league in 2018-19 two-point percentage field goal percentage the guy just makes easy points He lost minutes this year in Washington, yes, to Daniel Gafford. But look, Daniel Gafford also, along with Hartenstein, one of the two best rim protectors in the league this year. Mm -hmm. So no shame there. That's a great player you're losing minutes to. Brian, I think, would be an unbelievable fit to the point where he actually would start stealing minutes from Precious Achua. Defensively, he's a little less proven. But hey, they have the star already in Precious on that side of the ball. But he would give them everything that they lack at the center spot in actuality. Whereas a lot of other guys like Drummond or Mitchell Robinson, it's more in theory. In Bryant, it's in reality. Go for it. Wow. A minute 28. Unbelievable. You crushed it, Lewis. You're just very good at clock management. Uh, All right. So the counterpoint, I think, to this one as I start my timer... I think the defense does really concern me, and I kind of feel like he'd be the type of dude who, in Nick Nurse's system, we know Nick Nurse is going to get real angry if you don't play his system well, and it feels like after playing with the Wizards for four seasons, there's probably not a whole lot in the way of like good defensive habits instilled into Thomas Bryant which I think concerns me. Uh, you know, I also take the point that he does the low-hanging fruit stuff, like the the stuff you really need from the center in terms of his, you know, finishing around the basket. He's a 66% shooter for his career from two-point range. He's a career 35% three-point shooter as well. Was not so hot this year. Uh, had a couple of pretty decent seasons, but small sample sizes before that. So the three-point shooting is kind of a mystery, honestly. I I feel comfortable in saying he can finish around the bucket pretty comfortably, but I'm not so convinced about his threes. And the bigger question here is health, right? Like Thomas Bryant, over the course of the last three seasons, has played 83 games in total. And look, you get bad knee injuries and you miss a lot of time for rehab. That's just how it's going to work. And it sucks for him that that's how it's been for him. You know, he comes back to a Wizards team where Daniel Gafford is in place and they have a million guys in the front court to get minutes to. So, you know, that's part of the problem of him getting back and ingratiated. But I do think there's concerns about the health and I'm not convinced about the three-point shooting or the defense, which leaves the two-point shooting as kind of the only real, I think, bankable skill here for Thomas Bryant. In which case, you know, I feel like you can find other guys to check a little bit more in the way of multiple boxes as my alarm goes off. Uh, There we go. Cancel that. Uh, Do you have a rebuttal before we wrap this thing up? Yeah, because I think your idea of uh, not being good on some sides of the ball in past guides was a good thing. Because that just meant Precious started and played 30 minutes. That's So fair. there's no downside. <laughs> Look, I'm talking myself into pretzels over here. It's part of the damn concept concept of the show. Uh, but I think that's a good place to leave this one off. We got Thomas Bryant in. Thomas Bryant, you're done. And we are now going to uh, wrap it there. We'll be back again tomorrow as we dig into wings and guards. And that should be a lot of fun as well. We've got the concept down. It's airtight. Tomorrow should be even better. Lewis, before we go, anything you'd like to promote? No, nothing. This was a blast, man. I I appreciate being able to chat with you. And it's nice disagreeing. I never disagree with people on pods. I'm (laughs) glad we have some. As long as it's not like uh, angry, yelling at each other, getting personal, I think a disagreement is just fine to work in. Oh, I'm driving to Hamilton this afternoon, but. Yeah, you stupid bastard. 
Um, with that as well, uh, just a heads up. Uh, yeah, we'll be back with the guard show tomorrow. For me, to promote something that's happening tonight before the next episode will be seen or viewed or heard, uh, tune in to CEBL Plus or CBC Gem tonight, 7 p.m. Guelph Nighthawks, Scarborough Shooting Stars, J. Cole, Jalen Harris, Cat Barber, a second-team all-G League guy playing for the Guelph Nighthawks, gotten to some NBA games this season for the Atlanta Hawks. Very, very good game on tap tonight. And I'll be calling it with Joe Razzo and Danang Balsera from uh, Sleeman Center in Guelph. So be sure to tune into that, 7 7 p.m. It's free, CBC Gem, or on the CEBL mobile app, where you can just create an account for free, and you can watch all the games. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, with that, though, we'll wrap it up there. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Make your second listen of the day. Locked on NBA is they are covering all things conference finals and sorting through whatever the hell that was last night in Game 5 down in Miami. Uh, go check it out, and uh, we'll be back again tomorrow with the second edition of Mid-Level Madness, Guards and Wings edition, with our pal Lewis. Talk to you then. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>